Hey everybody, Carl Schuff here from Greensock. Welcome to part two of my CSS animation workflow issues series. Today I'm going to get into the nitty gritty of the real world hassles of CSS animations by doing a side by side comparison of building a fairly simple animation with CSS and GSAP. To begin though, I want to talk about some basic animation truth. When doing any sort of animation, experimentation and constant changes are necessary. You can't just simply plot out an animation and hope it works the first time. Also, animation should be fun. If you're not amazing yourself along the way, do something else. Lastly, animation is an art form. The difference between an okay animation and a great one can sometimes be just a subtle change in feel. That takes real talent to perfect and recognize. The tools you use should not get in the way of your creativity. The current implementation of CSS animations quite simply makes one think that animation should be a rigorous ordeal. And this goes way beyond just the sheer amount of code, it's the way it's organized in various different chunks. You can't just look at the CSS and get a very quick idea of how different objects are animating in relationship to each other. The Greensock animation platform, GSAP, on the other hand, was created from the ground up to suit the real world needs of professional animators. I invite you to follow along as I expose some serious problems I encountered when trying to build a simple animation with CSS and compare it to the flexibility offered by GSAP. So just as a recap, in my first video I discussed in length how the percentage based timing of CSS animations is very difficult to work with. It's almost impossible to synchronize two animations that have varying lengths. So I strongly suggest you watch that video. So with that understanding, how do we approach a more complex animation where we do have multiple items animating of different durations and we need to synchronize the events in various animations? Well, the only solution I could come to was that every animation is going to be the same length and we start them all at the same time. I chose this route for two reasons. One, because the delays of CSS animations proved to be inaccurate, which I will show. And secondly, I just couldn't think of any other way to do it. So the route I had to take was to figure out how long the longest animation was, and then I would create all my animations of that length and try to synchronize them all. This was a little bit hard to wrap my head around, so I actually had to create this chart which illustrates where the car would be for each second of animation, okay? So I figured that from second zero to one, the car would come in, it would wait for a second, from second two to three, the car would go up, it would wait, at second four, the men would come out, at second five, the car would come down, and then the car would move out. So this is the process that the car follows, and this is a seven second animation. Now, I didn't want all my animations to be seven seconds long, because then to figure out how long a second is, it would require some math. So I decided that, hey, even though the animation of the car is seven seconds long, I figured I would make each CSS animation 10 seconds long. That way, each 10% increment would actually be a second in duration. So all of my animations that I created are 10 seconds long, and they all start at the same time. And if we run this animation, you'll see that it runs pretty decently. But I submit that it's an inordinate amount of work. All right, next I just want to quickly address my claim that CSS animation delays are largely inaccurate. I made a very basic code pen demo that has a black box animating for six seconds, and at three seconds delay, the gray box starts animating. And it might be hard to see in the video, so I'll pause it, but the black box and gray box overlap, showing you that the delay is not accurate. Whereas in the animation below here, both animations start at the same time, they're both six seconds long, and they align perfectly. So again, just a little example to show you that I don't believe that delays are accurate, which is why I've chosen to make all my animations the same duration. All right, so let's get into the side-by-side -side comparison of how I would approach this project using CSS animations and GSAP. Again, using CSS animations, I would have to be dead certain that I have the car animation perfectly planned out so that I can easily synchronize the timing of other animations around where the car will be at certain points in time. So let's just go to this code pen where I have my seven seconds of animation worked out and I have my 10 second car animation and you'll see that the car does in fact come in, it waits, it goes up, it waits, 
it comes back down, and then it drives away. So before I go any further in synchronizing other animations with this animation, I have to be dead certain that my timing is absolutely perfect here. And I submit that I'm never going to know that my timing is perfect for an entire animation sequence at the beginning. It's something that you need to tweak and finesse along the way. But let's just assume that I've thought this out brilliantly, and this is the way that I want my car to animate. So the next thing I'm going to do is try to get that lift animation to run at the same time. So here's my lift animation, and you'll see that, okay, it goes up at the same time, it comes down with the car, and it all works fairly well. It's an awful lot of code to achieve this, but this is the way that I would do it. I would have both animations be 10 seconds long, because again, delays don't work, and both of the animations would start at the same time. I also submit that there are a lot of redundant keyframes that are necessary. I know that some people say you can chop off the uh, 0% and 100% a lot of the times, and this is true, but I found too often that when I did chop off one of the ending or beginning keyframes, that either at that moment in time or later on, it proved to be a problem. So I would only suggest getting rid of those redundant codes towards the end, because you don't want the car moving backwards like this. On the other hand, if I want to synchronize two animations using GreenSock, let's go over to my GSAT pen. I don't need to know where my car is going to be seven seconds into the animation. I just approach it like normal. I start doing the first thing first. So the first thing I'm going to do is just animate the car to a left position of 177 over the duration of one second. So I hit run and I have my car animating in. I don't need to do the entire path of the car first, I just start introducing the car. And now that I know that I want the car to go up and the lift to go up and the men to all come in at the same time, I'm just going to add a label to my timeline called up one second after the car animation finishes and then at that label I'm going to tell the car to go up to a top of 70. I'm not going to explain the GSAP syntax in depth here because this is not a tutorial but I just want to illustrate the flexibility. So right now just the car will go up one second after it gets to that position. If I want the lift to go up at that same label I'm just going to add another line of code which now makes the lift change its top position at the same label. Let's run this again and you'll see now the car and the lift go up at the same time. Right now the animation is repeating so perhaps I will just turn that off. So now I have the car and the lift going up at the same time and maybe I want to introduce my three men, okay? Well here two of the guys are off stage to the left and another guy is off stage to the right. So I'm just going to do some from tweens which are going to bring these guys in at the up label. So as soon as the car and the lift go up, boom, everybody comes in at the same time. Now at this stage of the game, I might not want everybody coming at the same time. Maybe I want man one and man two to start a little bit later. No problem. I'm still going to use that up label as a marker or reference and I'm going to add in 0.2 eight seconds, all right? So now I'm going to run the animation and you'll see that the guy on the right is gonna come in first and then just a little bit later, the other two dudes come in. Now that wasn't a major change by any means. Also at this point, maybe I don't wanna wait a full second before the car goes up. Maybe I want it to happen immediately. No big deal, I'm just gonna get rid of that position parameter. I'm going to run the animation and now you'll see that the car immediately goes up with the lift and then everybody comes in when they should. These are not major changes. I do want that one second pause, so I'll put that back in there. Now, let's take a look at the CSS version. So far, I just have the lift animation and the car animation in place. What I'm going to do is paste in the animation for uh, all the men, and you'll see now that everything works pretty much the way it should. It's what I consider to be an inordinate and ridiculous amount of code, but let's just take a look at how we would make the previous changes I made to this animation. Well, man one animation, we would have to offset its start percentage time by 28%, and then I'd have to make the change to man two animation as well. Next time we run, you will see that, all right, they come in a little bit later, and then they go away. So 
to just change the start time of those two guys, I had to make a change in two places. But let's do something a little bit more drastic and now get rid of that pause that we have once the car comes in, this little wait right there. Well, I'm not even going to waste time doing it in front of you because I would have to change the car animation, the lift animation, and then three of the man animations. So again, even taking into consideration that maybe there's a different way to do this, maybe trigger some of these animations with JavaScript timeouts, I would still have to change code in four or five different places to get rid of that extra second of waiting that I had in my animation. And I don't can't imagine a workflow other than GSAP that makes building a simple animation like this as flexible. Um, I just also want to point out while I'm here that I know some of you are going to say, well, you don't have to list out so many repetitive keyframes. You know, you can share some of them on the same line. Um, so I want to show you that I am aware of that fact, um, but I also find this syntax to be largely unreadable when you're bouncing between 0%, 30% to 20%. Um, it's really hard to envision what this animation code here does. So again, for a simple animation like this, I, I just can't get over how much code you have to change for something so small. It really sucks all the fun out of building your animation. Now let's go back to the GSAP code and you'll see that I have, you know, pretty much the animation built up to the point where the car goes up. I'm not going to waste your time typing out each line of code that is yet to come, so I'm just going to paste in a little snippet here. And first I want to just show you that, you know, look at how little code I have in the JavaScript version, which accomplishes the same exact task and it will work in more browsers. And as you've seen, making small changes along the way isn't a total hassle. Let's say you want to do simple, like have the third man spin around before he leaves our animation. So right now, you'll see that you know the car goes up, everybody comes in, and this guy kind of leaves backwards. That's pretty lame from uh, my standpoint. So what we're going to do is, before he leaves, I'm just going to paste in one line of code that changes his scale x very quickly. And that's going to happen one second after everything else has happened. And I'm going to get rid of this little offset right here. So minor change, very easy to implement. So now the lift is going to go up and the dude is going to spin around and then they all leave. So something like that was very simple to do. Now, imagine we want to troubleshoot the last part of the animation, all right? I think that the car leaving is a little bit awkward, okay? And every time I test the end, I don't want to have to watch this animation. So watch when the car leaves. You'll see that it starts fast and then slows down because by default, all these tweens have an ease out applied to them. So what I'm going to do is I want to test a new type of ease at the end and I'm just going to say, all right, ease, we're going to say power one dot ease in. And this is going to make the car start slow and then accelerate. But I don't want to watch this entire animation right here. So what I'm going to do is just add a little label. I'm going to call it out. And then I'm going to say tl dot seek out. And then watch this. As soon as I hit run, I can watch just the end of the animation. This is totally impossible with CSS animations. And animators don't want to have to watch an entire animation to just tweak the end of it. Imagine this was 10 seconds long and I wanted to tweak the end. I'd have to watch 10 seconds of animation for just a simple change like this. That's ridiculous. Furthermore, if I want to add in maybe an ease at the beginning, maybe when the car comes onto the stage, maybe it overshoots the lift a little bit and then reverses back. Well. That's no big deal. I can just add an ease back dot ease out. I'm going to hit run and one little change. Pretty cool. All right. We go to the CSS version and what are we going to do to add an ease? Well, we would have to literally go do my car animation and we'd have to add a bunch of bunk keyframes in here for the overshoot and then bring it back to where it needs to go. And we'd have to play with the timing and percents and it would be a mess. Going back to the GSAP version, you know, very often you'll work on an animation and it will be pretty much good to go, but you know, maybe a part of it or all of it, somebody says, you know what, I want it to just be overall a little bit faster or maybe a little bit slower. Well, check this out. Uh, with GSAP animations, I can set the time scale to be four. And now this is a little bit ridiculous, but to prove my point, 
I can obviously speed up every part of the animation and make it four times faster. Or maybe it needs to be slower. I'll make it run at half speed. And so now we can really see what's happening and exactly how each animation starts in relationship to each other. And it's a walk in the park. You'll see that I have now in the slow version that all those guys left at the same time. Uh, one thing else, while I'm here I might want to change. Maybe while they're leaving, instead of having them all leave at the same time, I'm just going to say stagger to, and I'm going to offset their time by 0. Point, eh, we'll say 3 seconds. And you know what? We're also going to put this tween in at a label of men out, okay? And then just so I'm not wasting your time, I'm going to just test that by going to the men out label. So now you'll see that new effect of each guy leaving in a staggered fashion. Each time I hit run, you'll see how that works. So again, the focus here is on real workflow issues that professional animators face. And we might even have another change where the client says, oh, you know what? Once the car goes up, we want to have some text show up for maybe four or five seconds, and then everything will go down and the dudes will get out of the way. Well, a change like that doesn't need to be catastrophic. I'm going to just paste in a header one HTML text right here, go to my JavaScript panel, and I'm going to paste in just a repeating tween that's going to fade in that text, hold it for a little bit, and then fade it out. Right before the guy spins around, I'm just going to paste in this one little line that's wrapping, and now when I run, check out what happens. Oh, the car goes up, the dudes come out, it holds, the text fades in, the text is going to fade out, and then the dude's going to go away, and everything's fine. Now with him going away, I probably don't want the, uh, I'm sorry, this guy to wait an extra second, so I just get rid of that. But that change took me literally just a few seconds. If we go back into the CSS version, you know, now I'm adding four extra seconds to my animation. That totally blows up my plan of having all the animations only be 10 seconds, so that each 10% interval would be a second. So to add five seconds to this animation, would mean that I'd have to change around the car animation, the man, I'd have to make literally, I would say, a dozen complex changes, which would take, I'm sure, an hour or so to do it by hand. And again, folks, I'm open to the fact that I probably didn't approach this in the most efficient way from the CSS angle. I know the pros out there have some tricks up their sleeves with preprocessors like SAS and using mix-ins, and I'm sure there's ways to make some of these changes a little bit less painful. But on a whole, I'm really curious to see you know, what alternatives are there and how do they really measure up to the conveniences that we just saw that GSAP offers us? You know, I'm hoping by now, after seeing the GSAP demo, that you can see that the code does not need to be verbose, nor does it need to be complex. And yet, we still have an amazing amount of control over how all the timing for each individual animation works inside of our timeline. And as far as performance goes, I know some folks hold on to the belief that CSS animations are always faster. And perhaps maybe a few workflow hangups are worth the speed increases. I encourage you to go to CSSTricks.com and read Jack's CSS Mythbusting article. Check out the speed test and see exactly for yourself how GSAP compares. In many cases, GSAP was actually faster than CSS animations, even on mobile devices. Results vary, of course, but my point is that I'd encourage you not to buy the popular myth that CSS is always faster. It's not true. To wrap up, I just want to thank you guys for watching. I urge you to get your feet wet with GSAF. I'm confident you will find that it really allows you to bring your animations to the next level and enjoy the process at the same time. And again, I've said a few times that I'm really interested in seeing how you guys would create this type of animation. So what I've done is I've created a full storyboard so you can actually see the coordinates of each one of these assets for each keyframe of the animation. We're only changing the left and top coordinates of each asset, so it should be fairly easy to reconstruct. We're not doing any crazy translations or rotations or anything weird. All simple stuff. I'm also giving you a pristine file that you can fork, and you're off to the races. I have some very basic CSS in here that just has some assets positioned. You're free to change whatever you like. I'm just looking for something that can really uh, sort of simulate the GSAP animation I've been showing you. All right, folks, really interested in hearing your feedback and seeing how you do this. Take care.